Hello and welcome to Evaluate This. I'm Andrew Fryer and in this short screencast I'm going to show you DHCP failover in Windows Server 2012. To do that I've got two virtual machines. My DC here, London DC, is already running DHCP, DNS and is also my Active Directory server. Server 1 on the other hand is a completely clean install of Windows Server 2012 and the first thing I need to do is to put the DHCP role onto that. Because I'm managing everything centrally, I can do that from here. I'll just select Server 1, choose the DHCP server role, and add the features in. That's running, so I can close this dialog. If I now look at my London DC, you can see that I've already got DHCP set up and here's a scope 192.168.10.0 and I can see my leases in here. And if I now jump onto server 1, what I need to do first is to configure this DHCP server as being authorised in my domain. So I just hit next here and just commit that change. And now I'm ready to set up failover. Probably easiest if I jump back onto my DC to do that. And I just right click on the scope here and configure failover. I've got the scope selected already. I choose my partner server, in this case server 1. And here I can give it a relationship name, a client lead time of an hour and a minute. I might just set that down to five minutes for the purposes of this demo. Then I can choose how my DHCP addresses are going to be split across these two servers. I've got load balancing mode and I've got hot standby mode. In my load balancing mode I could then associate more IP addresses with one server than with another. And all I need to do here in server 2012 is share a secret. I don't need to share storage and set up a cluster as we would have had to do in Windows Server 2008 R2. So I'll just type that shared secret in now. And I can go up to the scope now and look at its properties and I can see the failover that I've just set up. If I jump back onto server 1 and go into DHCP I can now see that scope is on here. And I can even see the current leases to it. So that's everything ready. But what happens when a failover occurs? So what I can do first is to see what's configured. And I can just go onto my physical host here and bring up a command prompt. And just type in IP config all. I've got quite a few switches here. So I'll just go up to the top and we can see here that my DHCP server is 192.168.10.1, which is my London DC environment. So if I now jump over onto my DC, what I could do from here is stop the service on this particular machine. Now obviously at the moment I've cached my IP address on this local machine, so in order to get rid of that I now need to just clear everything. And if I now renew my IP address and run IP config all again we can see here that our DHCP server is now 192.168.10.122 in other words server 1 Jumping back onto server 1, you can also see here there's a little icon has changed on IPv4, perhaps the only indication that you're running DHCP failover, and that this scope is active. So that's a quick introduction to DHCP failover. If you want to try this for yourselves, you just need to download Windows Server 2012 and follow this video.